you uh, for being back. Good morning. How are you? Hey, fellas. How you doing? Doing good. Um, defensive backfield. We just talked to Derek Stingley Sr. about the, uh, the, the woes and the defense and the defensive backfield for LSU. Looks like the Saints are suffering from the same uh, type of issues. What, what, what do you see when you see this defensive backfield struggling? I, I kind of see a mess, to be honest. It, it's a little bit perplexing that they're in this position because there's way too much talent within this group. You know, Marshawn Lattimore is a first-round pick. Janoris Jenkins got a huge contract. Marcus Williams is a, is a second-round pick. They spent $8 million on Malcolm Jenkins. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, a fourth-round pick, who should have been a second-round pick if there weren't some, uh, you know, red flags coming out of college. So you, you put all this talent in there, and these guys have been around for a while. They weren't busting coverages last year. They, they were a pretty organized defense. You know, there were some variables in Marshawn Lattimore's level of play, but you know, overall, you, you didn't see this happening one, two, three times a game, and, and that's what's going on right now. And I don't know what the excuse could be. You know, that they're, they played six games. They've had a bye. They had a chance to stop and regroup, and then they come out and they, they bust another cover three with Marcus Williams biting on the, uh, the dig route on, on a Mills passing concept, which is, you know, for a defense, that's a basic passing concept. That out route, you run it to move the safety to open up the deep route, and, and they bid on it. And that can't happen to an, to an NFL team and, and not a team with this much investment in the defense. So there's just basic things going on that, that they're doing every week. And as a veteran team that, that's played together, this was supposed to be the offseason. Hey, the Saints are going to hit this. They've been together forever. There, there's really no OTAs, training camps condensed, no preseason, no problem. The Saints will hit the ground rolling. Yeah. And they're the antithesis of that. And, and, and that's, you know, that's something that they have to figure out sooner than later. I, I think the point of, of patience has expired now that they've had this buy to reset and, and the stuff that's still going on. I mean, it's kind of wild, right? You look at that box score from the other day, and it should have been utter domination. And then you see the score, and it doesn't make any sense. And you learn it's just because the defense is just giving up the cheapest and easiest of points. Uh, you, you asked Peyton about this, Nick, and he had a great quote where he says, that's a $6 million question. Uh, is, is, is he just, like, enforcing that it's more than a million-dollar question because that's how bad it is? Is he calling someone out specifically? What was your interpretation there? My interpretation of that was somebody born, you know, that, that, that's 50 years old, that mixed the metaphor with the $64,000 pyramid and the $6 million man, and, and it came out a $6 million question. That's pretty good. That is good. That's pretty good. I, you know, pe people were kind of thinking it was, it was a shot at Marcus Williams. So he's on a rookie contract. The total contract's worth $6 million. Yeah, but he, he's a cheap player. I, I don't think that – they're adding up the 1.5 million in, in, you know, every year and, and coming to that conclusion that, oh, this guy's a waste of $6 million. No, he's cheap. You know, he, he, yeah. he's, a, he's on a rookie deal. Uh, so I don't think it was a, a specific call out of anybody. It just, you know, just in general, the whole group. And look, they're, they're at the point too. Like, you just can't keep watch. You, you can't keep giving up 30 points per game. They shouldn't have gave up, you know, the points in this game. It, it, it's too easy. Steve, Bob, like you said, it, it, it's cheap. They got to figure it out. Otherwise, this is going to be the thing that brings this team down. And as it, frustrating as the offense has been to watch at times, you know, Breeze is leading the league in, in completion percentage. They're scoring 30 points per game. Everything's good on that side of the ball. You know, they, they just got to stop giving up all these points. Yeah, I mean, the offense, when you look, uh, really, uh -oh, actually, Jordan, on. you're going to have to hang go. on. Hang on. <laughs> Nick Underhill joining us. He got <laughs> sniped there, Nick. Sorry about that. Nick Underhill joining us. Compliments of uh, former LSU Tiger and current attorney. Chris Perrette, how are we feeling, big fella? You want to go back in? I just wanted to ask about the improvement in the offense because they felt really good even without Mike Thomas. So, yeah, I, I think this was a game that set up really well for them because Carolina is kind of a static defense that, that plays a lot of cover three and cover two zones. So, so they knew exactly how they were going to be able to attack. And you could have these guys sit in zones. And they did a really great job, uh, especially on, on uh, Shaq Thompson's side of the field, uh, just kind of sitting between those, those areas between the linebacker and cornerbacker, linebacker and safety and kind of picking them apart. So if you were going to be without your top two receivers, this was a game that that was really going to line up for you if you had a solid plan. And, you know, the Saints are usually going to have a solid plan. So I don't think that they miss those guys too much. I think going into Chicago, it might be a little bit different. I, I don't think that it's all is lost if Mike Thomas doesn't play. I don't believe Emmanuel Sanders can play because he, he showed symptoms. Peyton said he was symptomatic uh, when he was discussing this. I don't know if that's how it officially went in, but if it was, he has to miss 10 game, 10 days. So, so you know, I, I think that takes him out of this one for sure. So, 
if Mike doesn't play and it's still Marquez Callaway who who is battling an ankle sprain, so you know his status is something to watch day to day too. But if it's him and Traquan Smith in this game, they're going to have to do a little bit more of man coverage beating against the Chicago cornerback, which is going to be a little bit stronger of a test. Um, Callaway, you know, he he did a good job of that at Tennessee. You know, I I looked at some of his production yesterday, uh, his targets there. A lot of it was against man coverage, cover one. Um, You know, Chicago does a lot of that. So it's a little bit of a jump. He he has the talent. He can do it. But I I think this game will be a little bit more of a test for for those wide receivers uh, than it was against Carolina. Breeze was great on Sunday, 29 of 36, 287 in the air, two scores, his two-man attack was flawless. Uh, no interceptions. He he looked retro on uh, on Sunday versus Carolina. W- what did you make of of his performance? And and now he's right back at top of the league in completion percentage. I think he just needed to, to dial in, and this was some of the stuff we were talking about earlier in the year. I mean, Jory, I I don't know. I mean, we come on here, it seems like a level-headed conversation, but a lot of people just felt like they needed to watch 45 minutes of the Saints' offense to speak to a national audience and tell them that this offense was done and, and come to these really steep conclusions which just really seemed idiotic, the, the whole conversation right, right from the start. I mean, there were signs of things that you needed to, to watch in, in areas of concern, but to jump to that early conclusion was, was kind of outrageous. And I, I think they're just doing what they they were going to do all along. And, and he needed to work into a rhythm. He needed to settle in with some of these new players. You know, I think taking a guy of his age and, and messing up his routine and the way he's done things forever threw things out of sync a little bit. Mm. But I think I think that they've settled in, and and, and, and you know he looks like how he's going to look. This is another game you don't hear anybody on TV screaming about air yards because he huh. completed so many passes and the receivers were running the right routes. But he only averaged 5.3 yards, uh, averaged up to target, his second lowest performance of the season in that. So where's that conversation now? It's not there because they look like the Saints, and this is how they've played forever. So w- when the receivers are running the right routes and everything's in rhythm the conversation changes and nobody's talking about this other stuff, which has been the case for this team since 2017. I mean, the way they're playing now is the same as Ben for since that season, since Brandon Cooks got traded. So, you know, I, I just, I think a lot of that stuff has went away. I think it was premature. And I think it, honestly, it was a lot of people just speaking off of one impression that, you know, uh, and, and they don't really watch this team and they really didn't know what they were talking about. Uh, Nick, does Alvin Kamara deserve a raise? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, when he signed that contract, you know, the thing we were talking about on my website, uh, on our podcast, we had this conversation a few times, was that if he waited, he was going to be able to eclipse Christian McCaffrey's contract if he stayed healthy. You know, I, I think that he's proven on a per snap basis he's the most talented running back in the NFL. The, the issue for him was availability. If he would have bet on himself and played out the season, stayed healthy for 16, you know, I, I think he could have got all the money in the world. You know, he gave up a little bit of that for security, which is not a bad move for, for a running back. Yeah, I mean, you know, look at McCaffrey paid. right now, right? It's like the shoe's on the other foot this year. Right. Like, so if he would have gotten knocked off the field, you lose money. If he would have if got hurt and been able to play through it, I think he still gets the same contract he got now. I, I think he made the smart move for himself to secure his financial future. But, yeah, I mean, in a weird way, you can look at it already and say, look, this guy's way better than any other running back in the league. That They got him on a bargain. So, you know, I think it's a win-win deal for both sides. Um, you know, he gave a little bit up, but I think it was a smart move for him to give a little bit up. Yeah, and to be clear, I just I was, I was being a little tongue-in-cheek there because, really, I just wanted to talk about how incredible Alvin Kamara has been. Uh, sign up for New Orleans.football. That is where you can find Nick's work. Trust me when I say it's the best Saints coverage that you can read. Nick goes in depth on like every single angle that you consider on this team. Uh, Nick, how about this? How could we we can't get out of his interview without talking about Marcus Davenport finally having that? You know, he, he very impactful last week, but like the literal game winning play in a TFL and then a sack to push the ball just a little too far uh, for for the Panthers. You know that that play I think is emblematic of, uh, of something that that's good for this whole defense. And the game before Marshawn Lattimore stand in there and getting the game-winning tackle too. It, it, these struggles are going on with this team. There's reasons to be frustrated and there's reasons to, to get checked out. It's disorganized. You know, it looks bad. They're the, they're the unit not living up to their end of it. It would be easy for players to kind of be in that situation. And it's a late, you know, that late in the game to kind of feel defeated and be like, hey, you know what, like, we're, we don't have it. We aren't a good enough team. But, no, like, every week they're staying in there. They're locked in. They're making these plays at the end of the game. 
And, and I just think that mentality is important as they try to find their way through these issues and figure out what's going on and, and fix it. You know, there's there's still a belief and a and a willingness and a fight in them that that get us served them well as they go through that process. But you know, more specifically to Davenport, he, I mean, I do think he is a difference maker for this team. I mean, you put him out there, it changes the way they block. Everybody gets at more advantageous looks. You know, I I do think this what was a game where Cam Jordan should have done a little bit more. He only got doubled on I think eight or nine passing plays, and, and you know, he only had a couple pressures. Oh, it would have been good to see him knocking on the door a little bit more. But, I mean, you know, Teddy Bridgewater had 16 passes that he got out under 2.5 seconds. So, I mean, there's a flip side to that, too, where, where everything kind of goes hand in hand. But, you know, I, I think that's the group that, that you need to see a little bit more out of. I mean, the, the secondary isn't giving them the help they need that to, you know, produce on a consistent basis. But if that's not going to get better, those guys up front, you know, they're, they're the, you know, you got, you got an all pro uh, Sheldon Rankins is, is supposed to be really good coming off this Achilles injury. The other guy, you have uh, two first round picks invested in them. It, at some point, if the secondary doesn't improve, they're going to have to find a way to get pressure a little bit quicker. Nick Underhill, New Orleans dot football. Make sure and subscribe to both the, uh, the podcast and become a uh, subscriber to the, uh, the website for the up-to-date information on the New Orleans Saints. It's the best. And you can catch him here every Tuesday. Compliments of uh, former LSU Tiger and current attorney Chris Barrett. Thank you, Nick. We'll talk next week. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Close it out to next.